Welcome back. So up until now, everything we've been doing um, around events and event listeners and the DOM and DOM manipulation and DOM selectors, we've just been doing one-off quick exercises um, that don't really amount to much. And that was just to kind of show individual pieces how they work. Now we're going to see how they all fit together and make a somewhat substantial app. So as you can see, uh, this is not the most beautiful app. That's coming. We're just focusing on how conceptually the pieces fit together here, how we take events, how we select elements, how we write HTML, and how those all fit together. Styling is just extra at this point. But in the next project we make, we are going to place a lot of focus on styling and making it look nice, I promise. So what we're going to make is a simple scorekeeping app. So I want you to think back to all those times that you've been playing rock, paper, scissors with a friend, or ping pong, or tic-tac-toe, and it's just so tiring to keep track of the score. It's so difficult to know who's winning when. So this app is for you. The way that it works, two players. Player one score, player two score. You load up the page, and it tells us we're playing to five. And so all we do is add a point by clicking on a button. So to add a point to player one, we click on player one. If we want to add a point to player two, we click on player two. And then whoever gets to five, you notice it turns green. And if I try and score again, I can't. That's because the game is over. So I can reset by clicking the reset button. And now let's have player two totally sweep. And that's it. We can't play anymore. And we click reset. So one more feature is that we can also specify what we're playing to. So if we want to have a game that goes until seven, I can use this number input here. And then all I have to do is let's make this a closer game. And player one just sneaks by at the end, seven to five, and the game ends at seven. And player one turns green, and we can't add any more points, and then we can reset again. So that's what we're gonna focus on building here. So the first thing we wanna do is get our file set up, and then create the HTML structure, and then we'll go in with JavaScript and make things work. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have a blank HTML document. I'm calling it scorekeeper.html. Going to add in our boilerplate and give it a title, just like that. And then let's start by talking about what we're looking at here. So this is an H1, and we will be changing this eventually. We don't want it just to be a solid H1, um, because there's two things inside of this H1. It needs to be like player one score to player two score, but we need to be able to select this separately from this. So we do want a way to divide this H1 into smaller pieces. So we'll see how we can do that in just a little bit. So next, this is a paragraph here, playing two, and let's just write playing to seven to start, or let's do five, I think that's what I had it at. And then we have an input here. This is input type equals number. So input type equals number, and that's all we need. And then we have our first button, player one, our second button, player two, and our last button, reset. So if we refresh this page, and now we open up our own page that we created, let's take a look. They look pretty much the same. I'll zoom in a little bit on this one. That looks just right. Of course, nothing happens when we click on anything. So now let's go and add our JavaScript in. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it scorekeeper.js. And like I always do, I'm going to add my alert here that says connected. Then I'm going to go over to scorekeeper.html and include my script. And I'm going to do it at the bottom here to start. So script type equals JavaScript source equals scorekeeper.js. Just like that. And now if we refresh, this is my version of the page. It tells me JavaScript alert connected. All right. So we have our HTML set up. It looks great. <laughs> what we need to do now is get some JavaScript code that actually adds some functionality. And as always, we need to start by selecting the different elements. So let's start by selecting the buttons. And let's just do the player one and player two buttons. And the first feature we'll focus on is when we click one of these buttons, the score should increment up here. So all we need to do is start by selecting that player one button. And if we look, it's just a button we may want to add an ID. So we'll call this P1, and down here, we'll add one for P2, 
And then we can also add one for the, the reset that we'll just call reset. So we have three IDs now. So it's much easier to select. We'll just call it var p1 button equals document dot query selector. Or we could do get element by ID. I will mix them up here. So the first one we'll do with query selector p1. And then p2 button will be document dot. And we'll do get element by ID. And we don't need that Octothorpe anymore. So that gives us the two buttons. And let's just set up our first listener. When we click on this first button, we'll alert or console.log something. So we want to write p1 button dot add event listener on click. And then we add our function here. And inside that function, we're just going to alert, whoops, alert clicked. And that's it. So if we refresh our page and we try clicking, great. That tells us we selected correctly and we added our listener for the click event correctly. Player two though doesn't do anything because we only added that to the player one button. So now let's talk about how this will actually work. When I click here, we need to have some variable that's called player one score or something that keeps track of how many points player one has. And I click, it should add one to player one score. And then the last part is updating this here to reflect player one score. So I'm going to make a variable. Let's just call it P one score and set it to be zero to start. And then all I want to do is when we click, we'll start by just always adding one to the player one score. So that will just be P one score plus plus just like that. And we refresh and we won't see anything because we should probably console.log P one score first rather than alert alert gets very annoying very fast. If we refresh now and open up the console and we click player one score, you can see it goes one, two, three, four, five, and it's going to keep going. So there's a few problems. One is we're not displaying the score here. And two, it says we're playing to five. And that's obviously not the case because we're just incrementing it as much as we want. So we'll need to have some logic that says if greater than five game over or something like that. But let's start by figuring out how we can update this H1. So what we could do is just select the H1 to start. So let's just call it var H1 equals document dot query selector H1, just like that. And then inside of here, we'll just say H1 dot text content equals P1 score, just like that. So we're going to take this H1 and change the text content to be whatever the score is that we're console.logging. And if I score here, well, that sort of works. But you can see that we completely overrode everything that was inside of H1. We want to keep the two and the other score. We just want to change this one number. So there's a way of doing that using some extra HTML that makes our life a lot easier. If we go back to our scorekeeper.html, we're going to introduce a span element. And the way that the span will work is that it will only wrap around the number, the score. So what that means is we can now, if I inspect this, nothing looks like it changes. And that's the point of a span. It's just a non-intrusive, if you will. It's a, um, just a way to wrap something with some tag that you can then use later or style differently or select with JavaScript, which is exactly what we'll do. If we look, we have our H1. But right here, we now have a special span wrapping that number. So if we select that span and change that span only, we'll still have the TO and our spacing correctly and the other score. So we want to select that span. And I'm going to, again, just do an ID here. So span, and we'll just call this P1 um, display, just like that. And now we need to go to our scorekeeper JS and change a few things. So we don't need to select the H1 anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to select var p1 display equals document dot get. And let's do query selector just for variety again, query selector. And we called it p1 display. So that will just give us the span. And if we wanted to check that that was working, why don't we just do a console.log right here, p1 display just to see when we load the page, refresh, it should print out 
Okay, it selected our span correctly. Okay, so now what we want to do, I'll get rid of that, is add one to the score. We can get rid of our other console.log. And rather than changing the text content on the whole h1, we just want to change it on our p1 display, which is this little span right here. And if we refresh now, there we go. So we get that player one display updating. Player two still doesn't do anything, but we have this feature working. So let's do the same thing for player two. So I'll go back, add in another span around our zero. So span ID equals P2 display, and then move the zero in between. We refresh, nothing should look different, but we now have two spans, as you can see. Then let's go back to our scorekeeper.js and let's add in two new variables. So we need the display span for player two. We need to select it with that ID. I'll use query selector again. And then we need a variable for the score of player two because we don't want them just to be the same score. Obviously we need two separate ways of tracking um, their values. So the first thing that I wanna do is test that our player two button is selected correctly. So I'm just going to do a console.log player2 button and just see what it prints out. And if we refresh and we look in the console, you can see something's awry. We selected the player1 button, not the player2 button. So something is wrong with our selector, which you can see here, we're selecting element by ID P1, which is the same as what we had up here. So we need to select P2 instead. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, if we refresh, we get button with ID P2, which is great. So now let's add in our listener. So P2 button dot add event listener, click. And I always like to start by just printing something out or alerting something, console.log P2 clicked, just like that. Refresh and we get P2 clicked. Our player one still works and P2 is running some code, now we just need to put the right code in there. If we take a look at what we did for the player one button, we need a player two score variable to increment to start. So var p2 score, and that should start as zero as well. And then we'll just come here and just change this to be p2 score plus plus. And then we need to update it in the display, which we haven't yet selected. So we also need to select that span Remember this span right here, ID of P2 display. So we're gonna do that. We're just gonna copy that line and change it P2 display, document.querySelector, P2 display. And then we'll just change the display on P2, the text content to be equal to the player two score. So let's take a look. I click on player one, that still works. How about player two? That works as well. Okay, so there is no end to our game right now. This would just keep going forever. So we need to work on adding that functionality. And the way that we're gonna do that is with a variable that's going to keep track of the state of our game. So our game has two states. The first one is the normal state right now where I can click, where I can play the game. And the second state would be what we might call game over where someone has won. So we need two states and we can use a Boolean to model that, just a true or false, and I'm gonna call it game over. So var game over, and it starts as false because game over is not true at the beginning of the game. And then what we'll do is we'll update game over to be true or false depending on if someone wins. So if someone gets to five, game over should now be true. And that should mean that we can no longer update the score and that we have to hit reset and reset should then make game over false again and start everything over. So let me show you what I mean. The first thing we'll wanna do is add another variable. I'm gonna call it winning score, and that's just going to be equal to five. So that variable is what we're going to compare player one and player two score to. So we're gonna check, has the player one score reached the winning score? If he or she has, then we need to say game over is true. So the logic will look like this. We're gonna have an if statement and it's just going to look like if game over is not been reached yet, so if not game over, then we're going to let you add to the score just like this. When I run this right now, you won't notice anything different. It will work exactly the same way for player one, and that's because game over is always false. It never changes. 
So when would we change it to be true? Well, when there's a game over. And when that happens is when the user score, so when player one score, is equal to the winning score. So after we add one to player one score, we'll just check. If, let's do p1 score, triple equals winning score. So if they're equal to one another, then let's start by just saying console.log game over, just like that. And if we refresh and we view our console, and I tried changing this. So far, this is not true, so this never happens. This time though, I add one, player one score goes to five. We're checking if player one score is equal to winning score, and we get game over down here. So rather than just console.logging game over, we actually wanna change the state where now game over is true. So what that will do for us, I'll show you if I refresh, is it will prevent us from adding more to the score because game over is true, this little check up here, it checks, is it game over yet? And if it is game over, none of this code runs. So let's try that. I get to five and I'm stuck. I can't increase it anymore. However, I can go to player two and increase that score because our logic is only for player one. We'll want to go over to this player two button at event listener and add in the same logic. So if it's not game over, then we'll let you increment the score and update the display. And then we also need to check if the new player two score is equal to the winning score, then it is game over. Game over is true, which means that the user, neither user player one or player two can continue to increment the score anymore. So let's check that this works, refresh, Okay, we can get to five here and we're done. Player two doesn't work. Or we can get to five over here and we're done and player one doesn't work either.